Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center in Phoenix. Welcome, YouTubers. We've been uh, restored on YouTube. We got in the doghouse. And we talked about a couple of topics we weren't aren't allowed to talk about. So uh, we got that fixed. And we're back. All right, thank you for coming. Got an interesting Bible study for you tonight. My granddad, when I was a kid, used to call it reverse psychology. I thought I'd try it. You know, why not? All right, the next seminar is October 28th of 2022. That would be at the end of this month. Here's our YouTube channel that has been restored. We've got two strikes on us, and uh, if we get a third one, they're going to wipe us out. Okay? But at the top of the YouTube channel, you'll see the channels button here, and then you can get all the other teachings uh, that I've done over the years, and the TV programs and all that stuff. It's all on there. Here is on the home page of the website my radio programs. I've been on the radio for 20 years here in Maricopa County, KXXT 1010 AM. They're all archived right there on Omni.fm. If you'd like to help the ministry, you can uh, buy a bunch of crap off of Amazon. You got to go to Smile Amazon, and then you put in our charity name, and when you buy garbage, they pay us a percent of whatever you buy. And it doesn't come, you don't pay it, they just pay it. So, me and Jeff Bezos, we're tight. <laughs> The fourth Saturday of every month is my deliverance training class. This is my favorite uh, time of the month. Lots of Q&A. And it's most of the time the questions are great. At noon, on, uh, oops, wrong date, the fourth Saturday of the month here in October. If you know somebody who needs to be delivered or healed and they can't come here, please send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I'll send you the miracle list for mentally ill. Or the miracle list for troubled Christians in several languages. There's my deliverance training course. It's in the bookstore. Here's the teaching on the seven churches of Revelation. We're almost there. Thursday nights is our blowout deliverance service with Brother Rick and the ministry team. It is fantastic. I hope you bring somebody who needs to be delivered or healed to that service. It's really something. You can donate on our download an app our Tithely app on your phone if you want to. We have donation boxes on the door there. Thanks for your donations. You can also donate on PayPal button on the website. I'd like to find something other than PayPal. I don't really like that place uh, morally, uh, but we don't, it's really hard to find something to put on your website so people can download to. So I'm stuck with that thing until I can find something better. Hoping, hoping something else will come up later. Yeah, I'm on Omega Man again this month, October 24th on a Monday. The Children's Deliverance Service, this thing is a knockout with Erica and the ministry team. That's the first Saturday of November on the 5th, 10 a.m. till 1. Please don't forget about our Zoom service every Wednesday. This thing's going great. Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Six o'clock Arizona time. If you send me an email or write this down, I'll give you the code and the pass password. 6 p.m. every Wednesday. There's my radio schedule here in Maricopa County, 1010 a.m. KXXT. YouTubers, I want to remind you that you are to start opening up terror cells in your churches and uh, you open up a cell and start terrorizing the devil. You start picking off the sick people, and they go through healing and deliverance, and then uh, God will bless you. It will increase by word of mouth as soon as people are getting healed. The pastor and the board will find out about it. They'll call you in. They'll say, hey, what are you doing? Then you say, well, I'm praying for people so they can get healed and delivered. Can't do that here. Why not? We don't do that. 
well, I'm gonna that's what the gospel is. Oh, you're fired. Leave. Oh, all right. And that's your promotion to your next ministry. That's not a downer, that's an upper. Okay. Getting kicked out of church is a privilege if you're doing the right thing. Now let's now granted, you know, I know some of you and your personalities, you know. <laughs> I want to be a little honest with you. Can I be? Can I be blunt? Uh, some of you uh, ooh, need to be kicked out of church because you got bad personalities. But if you're doing something for God, you're doing the right thing. Never apologize for that. Okay? If you got a rotten personality, go ahead and repent. Some of you are a little antisocial. You need to smooth it out huh? here and there. Yeah, go ahead and do that. <clears throat> There's the big three: the devil, mental illness, and healing. In the bookstore, the women's seminars coming up. These things are beautiful. November nineteenth, Saturday. Why am I still sick, ladies? Come find out and get healed. I have a new podcast every Sunday morning. I'll see you at nine a.m. for our time together. It's on Twitch. It's on Facebook. See you then. Now, uh, as I mentioned, we're getting in trouble with YouTube, so uh, Kelly's fixed it for us. I think, I think this slide is accurate. Is it accurate? This slide is accurate, the Lord just told me. We are broadcasting tonight's service on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube, and Rumble. And then <clears throat> after tonight, it will be reposted. Is this slide correct? I think it's correct. <laughs> you <laughs> on Vimeo, and Vimeo is really neat because it's closed caption, and the other ones aren't. But BitChute, GodTube, Rumble, it's this will be on there in the event that. YouTube catches up with me again and gives me the kaboot. Oh, my goodness. Uh, overcoming the will of God is tonight's teaching. I'm going to reverse field here. I'm always encouraging you to do the opposite. You know, just go with the will of God. Do the right thing. And many of you are not doing it. So I thought if I reverse psychology, like my granddad used to say, I'm going to use reverse psychology on you. That's what he used to do. My granddad used regular psychology on me and reverse psychology, and neither ever worked. It's weird. This is God, as you well know, and these things are important, are they not? Omnipotence means... All-powerful. This means omnipresence. Omnipresence. That means he's, he's everywhere, right? All over the universe, so to speak. Uh, omniscience means all knowing, knows everything. Correct? Yeah. Now, in the New Testament, uh, centuries ago, the Protestants came up with this uh, doctrine called the Trinity. And uh, they kind of made it up in a way, but it's actually based on this Greek word, theotes, which means Godhead, is what it was translated in the King James Bible. And uh, that is technically the Trinity, okay? And it says in the Old Testament, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay? And so everyone misinterprets it. It doesn't mean one numerically, it means one in unity. And if you look at it that way, the Trinity makes sense. If you look at it the other way, it makes no sense. And that's why the Muslims and so on, they make fun of Christianity because there's three gods. There aren't three gods, there are three individual persons who are one God in unity. And that will keep you from getting in a religious argument with somebody because you've got God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Ghost. 
Eh? Wait a minute, there's three of them. Yeah, there is three, but one means unity, not numerically, not personhood. Eh? It theotes. Correct? Here is God's will. Yeah, I didn't know you spoke for God, Mike. I do. I really do. I can read. Jeremiah 29 is telling you, each and every one of you, every person on YouTube, this is God's will for your life. Here it is in Jeremiah 29. The Lord thinks about you and he thinks about peace for you. The first thing Jesus said when he rose from the dead was peace to you. The wall of separation between humans and God was removed at the cross of Calvary. And now God wants to hang around with you. He wants to be your friend. He likes you. He wants to be with you. And he has peaceful thoughts about you. And he wants to tikva in Hebrew. He wants you to bring all your dreams and make them all come true. Your hopes and your dreams. He's on board. God's a good God. Yeah, it says here, right here, 1 Peter 3. The Lord is not lazy, slow, inattentive, but he's patient toward you, not willing that any person should perish. God wants 8 billion converts. 8 billion what? Humans. Supposedly, there's 8 billion humans on the planet, right? Is it 8 or 9? I forget, but it doesn't matter. He wants every single person saved. 100%. He wants every person to repent. The third part of the Great Commission in Luke 24 is that you are to go and preach to all nations that repentance and forgiveness of sins was to be preached in his name to all nations. Everybody has to repent. God wants to help everyone repent. Why? He wants to save every single person. Yeah. Calvinism is a lie. None of that crap's true. God didn't pick you to go to hell and pick you to go to heaven before you were born. That's all a bunch of horse. Oop. When God saw you in the womb, he said, yes, I want that one. And he saw another womb. I want that one. And he saw a big old belly. I want that one. See, what do you do? You choreograph this stuff and people remember it. Pregnancy, boop. What's that? There's a baby in there. What's the significance of that baby? He wants that baby. Every single baby. If you abort the baby, he takes the baby early to heaven. There are no aborted babies in hell. There are no babies in hell. Why is that? Well, they didn't reach the age of what they call reason or accountability and Paul explained it in Romans, their sin was not imputed to them. Imputation is the nightmare and a living hell for eternity. As soon as your conscience reaches this level and you're able to morally determine between right and wrong, your sin from that moment on is then imputed to you. Translation, it's tracked. You're being tracked, see, like Google. Every time you get on the computer, they know you're on. Every time you drive your car over here, they know where your car is. Every time you go to this website, they made a note of it. If you went to that website, they made another note of it. Well, the Holy Ghost tracks your sin from the age of accountability until you drop dead. Unless 
you become a born again Christian, and then your sin is wiped away by the blood of Christ. And it's gone. I love when the sin is wiped away by the blood. It smells like victory. Here's God. He wants all people to be saved. See it there? I'm not making this stuff up. There it is. First Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy. Saved. That means born again. He wants every single human. No exceptions. He wants them to come to the truth. Look, here's God and here's me. I'll never get there, but I got a mediator now. I got a savior now. <laughs> I can be accepted by God. I can't believe it. It's too good to be true. How do you destroy God's power? Oh, he can't do that. He's, om he's omniscient. He's omnipotent. No, he isn't. You can stop him. Yes, sir. If God has a certain will, you can stop it. Oh, the preacher on TV said that if, if it's God's will, it's going to come to pass no matter what. No, it isn't. You know why? You're there. You can stop him. Let me show you how. Thinking it out yourself. You can stop him. Why? Because God doesn't think like we do. Here it is, Isaiah 55. And my thoughts and my ways are not your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Well, if you want to do it your way and you think you're smart and you can figure it out yourself, guess what you're doing there? You're putting a stop to the power of God in your life and you are blocking the will of Almighty God. You as a human being, and stop the good Lord right in his tracks. Why? You're doing it your way. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. In our society, the churches are so weak, so Mickey Mouth, so many losers, that everything is happiness and peace and joy and no one fears God anymore, so they say whatever they want. They do whatever they want. They get pissed off when they ever want. They get mad whenever they want. They give somebody a piece of their mind. They tell them what to do. They snap at them. They cuss them out. Why? Why do people do that? Why do Christians do that? They don't fear God. They know he's listening, but they don't care. They don't care. Not interested. Why? People are not taught to fear God. They don't have any fear of Him. So they just say whatever they want, do whatever they want. Screw it. I'm good. Romans 1. They profess themselves to be wise, but they became more I know, which is where we get our English term morons. Morons. What's the concept here? Well, Divine intelligence is so superior to human intelligence. It looks like we're a bunch of morons running around here. I mean, you could have a room full of Albert Einsteins, right? 100, 168, 170 IQs. You can have an Elon Musk sitting there, 190 IQ. Compared to the Holy Ghost, they look like retarded kids in a sheltered workshop putting blocks together. Does that make sense? Divine intelligence is incomprehensible. And so, professing themselves to be wise, they became morons. Okay? What's, he, what's he trying to tell you here? Hey, listen. 
This is a spiritual war. You got to do it God's way. You can't do it through human intelligence. You're never going to make it. I thought this. Well, I figured it that way. This is what I think. Ah. Run into somebody like that with those that Trinity. You're looking at a dead bang loser. If you don't believe me, go to a church. The church is full of them. Total losers everywhere. Why? They're thinking about it themselves, figuring it out on their own, doing what they think they should do. Oops. I gotta work. Jesus came to his own country and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath day, he taught in the synagogue. Remember that? That's Mark chapter 9. Chapter 6. Many were astonished. Expresso means to be shocked. I mean, like, what? You gotta be kidding me. We know this guy. He grew up here. I went to grade school with him. I went to junior high with Jesus. Assuming they had junior high then. I'm kind of making some of this up, but a point I'm trying to make when he was young He grew up with these people and he was a super intelligent kid. He was a genius He was a really good person. He was outstanding as a human being, but It doesn't matter as King Solomon once said Familiarity breeds contempt so if you are around someone all the time as psychologists say, you become systematically desensitized to that person and you kind of start taking them for granted. It's, uh, it's what we call marriage. And so what it is is, I'm getting used to you. I've been around you too much. See? That's why preachers have traveling ministers come in so their congregation will listen because they've been listening to the pastor too long and they've become desensitized to him or her and they don't listen anymore. Human nature. That's how humans work. I know how humans work. I've been a counselor for 40 years. That's a, the only thing I know is people. I don't know how to fix things. I don't know mechanic work. I don't know computer. I'm a people person. And as you can tell from my personality, everybody loves it. I mean, it's amazing. They were stunned. Why? What had happened to him? Well, they didn't know this. They didn't understand it. He had been to the River Jordan. I hope you'll steal that sermon because that one will preach. He went to the River Jordan. What happened to him there? He changed. He changed. What happened at Jordan? That wasn't the same Jesus I went to junior high with. Something's different about him now. I wonder what that is. Oh, do you think it could be the Holy Ghost? Oh, I think it could. John explained it to us in chapter 3. The great John the Baptist said that God gave him the Spirit without measure. No one's ever had it before. No one has ever had it since. No one ever will have it. Nobody has the Holy Ghost without measure. What does that mean? That means it's without measure. It's without limits. That's why everybody got healed at a Jesus rally that wanted to get healed. 100% healed. 100% delivered from Dean. Everybody. Got healed. Why? The Messiah had the Holy Ghost with no limitations. John chapter 3. Which included intelligence. His natural intelligence, being a genius, was now off the rack. Unbelievable. He had the whole Torah memorized. Could quote every section of the scroll just like that. And they're sitting there listening to him in the synagogue. They can't believe it. Welcome back, Yahshua. How you doing? Remember when we used to play soccer? Yeah, I remember that. Loved it. What? 
This is the same guy that left. He went to the river. Jordan. He became a different person. That can happen to you. Not the spirit without measure. No, that's not going to ever happen. But you can become a different person at the river. He did. He said, "What? Well, how do you have all this stuff? Where, where's all this wisdom? What about these mighty words? This guy, what are you doing? Well, they weren't amazed at him anymore. What? Look, at they grew up with him. They were used to him. See? And Christianity dies on the vine when you become used to the things of God. When you become used to God's word. When you become used to prayer. Then the devil begins to tear you down. Because now you're used to it. It's not special anymore. You become an expert on the word of God. Oh, you think you know something. That's when he's got you by the throat. You get used to it. And you become useless to God. What's the difference between all these great Holy Ghost preachers and regular church people? That's it. They never lost their childlike faith. They never lost their boyish enthusiasm. They never got used to it. They never became a Christian failure. Once you get used to the things of God and it becomes a casual thing to you, you become spiritually useless to others. And you will die a spiritual failure. I've done that before. Whatever. Really? Yeah. The devil's got you by the throat. He got you used to it. Anybody here been married? Nobody? Well, I have several times and kind of an expert in that area. Once you get used to your spouse, you've never been married, have you? That was a slow no. I started to pant. I started to have a Elizabeth moment there. Which I didn't get an immediate no, I was expecting immediate no. Let me go over on this side, it's safer. See, that little girl over there is not married. So when you get married, if you get used to the person and you just take them for granted and it becomes a routine thing, oops, what are we looking at there? Separation and divorce. <clears throat> How'd you get all this power? What's you, what are you doing there? Wait a minute, is this the guy? They're staring at him. Yeah, that's the guy. His brother's here. Yep, his sisters are here. Yeah, his mom's here. Dad, the guy, the dad fixed my wagon last week. What did, they were what? Scandalizo. Once somebody says something or does something to you and you take an offense to it, the devil just reaches up and grabs you by the throat. And then he drags you into oblivion. You just quench the spirit. You have now become a complete, total, spiritual loser. You took an offense. What happened? The Holy Ghost was quenched. Quench not the spirit. Grieve not the spirit. When you took an offense at somebody, you shut everything down. You don't believe me? I'll prove it to you. Jesus said, look, here's how it works. A prophet has honor everywhere he goes except among his what? Yeah, is in his native land. Hey, I'm from here. I'm from this town. I'm from this village. I grew up here. You got used to me here. You don't have any respect for me. You're used to me. Among his own relatives, some Ganesh, in his own home, his residence, Pakia. And what happened? They took an offense and the miracles shut down. They blocked the will of God. 
They block the power of God. I didn't know humans could do that. You do now. He says it right there. He could do no dunamis, supernatural power. No supernatural power. The synagogue went back to being a routine. Oh, yeah, the priest comes up, and then they roll the scroll out, and then they take an offering. A pottery cup comes by, somebody gives a testimony, then they have a prayer time. Who needs prayer? I do. Oh, Yahweh, Jehovah, may you have mercy. Okay, may God richly bless you. Say this, do that, go home. It became a routine. Once it becomes a routine, the devil's got you by the throat. You will never escape. Mind you, in the synagogue, the Messiah himself is teaching these people. He'd been to the river. He had the Holy Ghost without measure. And nobody got healed. Nobody got delivered from demons. Nobody. Why? They shut the power of God down. You have that power. You can do that. You can stop the will of God. Well, that's not what I was taught. You were taught wrong. It's my job to fix it. That's my job. And everybody who loves it says amen. Thank you. I hate this guy. They were shocked at him, and Jesus was shocked at them. It was a revival of shocks. And nobody got healed. Nobody got delivered. I'm shocked at you. You're shocked at me. He couldn't believe it. What shut it all down? Human unbelief. The human mind thinking I'll do it my way shuts it down. Unbelief shuts it down. No miracles, no power, nothing. Stopped dead in its tracks. <laughs> God, are you kidding me? No, I am not. How do you shut the power of God down? Hey, just get stuck on a bunch of traditions of men. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 29 in Mark 7. Jesus told these people, Who's he talking to? Christianity in America, 21st century. These people honor me with their lips. Oh, it's all hill song. Ow, oh, laser light show. But their hearts, yeah, are far from me. They worship me in vain. Oh, my goodness. Why? Because they do traditional stuff. This is what we've always done it. They lay aside the commandments of God. They keep their tradition. They told Jesus, hey, you're not washing your hands before you eat. You use pot. You're using a pot that wasn't washed. You're a pothead. No, that has nothing to do with God washing Pots. Washing your hands. How's that spiritually helping anybody? Well, now I'm not saying don't wash your hands. I wash my hands tonight. You know, there's sanitary reasons. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not criticizing people who wash their hands. It's ridiculous. Of course, you should maintain, you know, cleanliness. Nothing wrong with that. But it doesn't have any spiritual value. The traditions of men, oh, they'll kill you, man. 
you start cooking up a bunch of religious crap The uh, rabbis took the Old Testament and the Torah and they said hey This doesn't answer all of our questions and they were right it doesn't so then they filled in the answers What happened then a nightmare? <laughs> the Catholic Church Listen the New Testament isn't enough. We need these things once you mix the tradition of man in with Glorious gospel of Christ what happens there you shut down the power of God You start going through rituals and traditions that don't help anybody then you make up a bunch of books that have traditions and rituals in them and You are Further away from God than you started Yeah, then you then you make your own Bibles up and you start getting into your cult stuff why not? You, you're thinking, human thinking, I'll do it my way. I think it's best this way. End up in big trouble. For example, none of these things here, none of these things is actually scriptural. These are just things people made up. Now, are you criticizing all the No, I'm just trying to point out. These traditions that people make up don't have any spiritual value to God. They're just something you made up. Right? So it's Christmas and you want to give her a present. Okay. <clears throat> that doesn't have any spiritual value. So we made that up. You give him a gift. That's how we do it. Why do you do that? Well, uh, the wise men. You go. Oh, okay. I, what's the point there? I'm not criticizing. I'm saying they made it up. You can't just make up stuff and expect spiritual benefits from it. There aren't any. These are all uh, made up by somebody. Somebody just made it up. And hey, this is it. There it is. We think this is right. We believe this is right. This guy here needs where's a religious outfit. There it is long black robe got a big old cross there There it is This guy's wearing a shop prayer shawl. There he is Okay, what good is that? None That's not it's just something Oh, there's the Pope with a bunch of Cardinals. There they are. They're all dressed up okay. Religious people like long things for some reason and they like Jewelry, they're like wrappers. Here's your masons. Oh, they're all dressed up. They got a robe on. They got a V-neck thing. They got badges. You know how the military is. You know, you got this badge. What's the point of that? Well, there's the, the point is you're just doing it. That's the tradition of men that has no spiritual value. They got. It. Oh, there's the. Imam of Iran, he's got him up. He's got a bonnet there. There's a big bonnet. Yeah, boy. Oh, he got a robe. And for some reason, religious people like baggy sleeves. You ever notice that? They always have baggy sleeves. Why is that? I'm not sure, but they seem to party with it. Here's the here's the uh, uh, Pope. He's got a white outfit. There's a big old cross there. See it? He's got a little beanie right there. See that? Okay. Here's the Orthodox Church, the leader. He's got him a different kind of cross. Both of them got the big baggy uh, sleeves. That's, that's a deeper, deeper spirituality. If your sleeves are baggy, you're deep. If you. You want to absolutely stop God Almighty in his tracks? I mean, you want to stop him, bang! He won't move another inch. You know how to do that? You just commit the worst sin there is. <clears throat> and here it is. Unbelief and his twin brother, doubt. Matthew 21, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, if you have faith, 
and doubt not okay? Now you see why people can't get their prayers answered they have enough faith to pray But they mix in doubt which cancels out the prayer Doubt is like strychnine in a glass of water. Nobody's going to drink it. He says, if you doubt not, you can wipe out this fig tree like I did. And not just a fig tree, but a mountain. Translation, you can have anything you pray about, it's yours. But if you mix in strychnine, it's going to kill your prayer. Preachers teach false doctrines. They say, listen, you know what your problem is? You need to increase your faith. No, doesn't work, does it? It doesn't work. Why? No, you have to remove the doubt. You already have faith. You've got plenty of faith. To do anything you want. You already believe. If I pass out a survey here tonight, everybody would check the boxes. Believe in Christ? Yes. Believe he died on the cross? Yes. Believe he rose from dead? Yes. You love God? Yes. Can you eat your prayers answered? No. Why not? I don't know. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. It's my job to tell you. You mix in doubt. It cancels your prayer. You stop God in his tracks. I'll prove it to you. All things, whatever you desire, whatever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Now you see this verse? Check this out with me. Matthew 21 verse 22 this verse has caused more problems in Christianity than you can even imagine okay? this verse uh, helped blossom the the word of faith movement the blabbing faith doctrine which is a lie it does not work why doesn't it work because nobody interpreted the verse properly dude come on What's that verse actually saying? Whatever things you ask, it says. Okay? Now, let's analyze that word for a second. Ask. The Greek word eroteo means that uh, you would ask somebody a general question, you know, like what time is it? What time is it, by the way? 740 oh Boy, I got to speed it up here <clears throat> That would be me asking you just a casual question. You know Where's Arby's? That kind of thing If you were reading in the New Testament the word ask a s k would be used to translate that word erotel Asking for something it's the same English word translating I tell which does not mean to ask It is a different type of asking It means to ask for something you already know has been promised you and is yours You're just simply asking for it now You have no legal or moral right to answer my question. What time it is, is it? Okay, I don't have a legal or moral right to get that information. Where do you live? You have no moral right to tell me where you live. Okay, by the way, where do you live? Um, <laughs> but 
You see, I'm asking her, Eroteo, I'm asking for some information. That's not in that verse. Eroteo means to ask for something that God already told you you could have. You already know it's yours. So you're just simply, thank you. See the difference? This asking presupposes you already had faith to make it yours. The other is a question. It's a debatable subject. What's your phone number? Okay, arrow tail. She has no legal obligation to give me her phone number. Okay. I'll get it from you later and I'll put it on my Facebook page. But Itao means that God already told you you could have it. You're just simply asking to collect it. You already believed it was yours. You're just coming to get it. Then it says believing. Oh no. No, it doesn't. Uh oh. <clears throat> Histuo is a Greek verb, as you know, and it means to step out on your faith and put your faith into action. Which presupposes you already had faith for the answer, and you're just simply collecting it by stepping out in faith. It does not mean to believe something mentally or intellectually. Oh yeah, I believe that. You believe in Christ? Yeah, I believe it. How about, how about the cross? Yep, I believe it. Yeah, resurrection? Yeah, got it. Resurrection, yeah. No, that's not going to work. That doesn't work. Yeah. No. It's ours already, but it's, you're not demanding it. You're, you're not demanding. It, you're asking for it. Well, yeah, I mean, I think you'll end up at the same spot using your logic. That's presupposing they had faith. When I was living in sin, I went to happy hour every Friday night up at Enchiladas in North uh, Phoenix. I was a regular there and knew everybody. And, you know, sometimes I'd. You know, and when I went there, obviously the gals were like enamored. And, you know, I'd walk up to a gal and I'd say, hey, you know, uh, would you like to have dinner or something? That was Eroteo uh, mixed with hope. Okay. <laughs> that was not Iteo saying, oh, I got this chick in the bag. Let's go. See the difference? You already know you got it. So who doesn't qualify for that verse? Your typical Christian. Why do you think Christians can't get their prayers answered? I just explained it. They misinterpreted that verse. And so the word of faith crackpots all used it to sell books and tapes and everything. Just make it, just blab it out. Blah. No, 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 no. This determines the miracle. The speaking is only confirming it. I cannot believe it. I should be selling books and tapes. Does anybody not understand this verse now? If I don't have this one in, I'm going to have trouble in the rest of these. Right? Everybody gets it? Beautiful. All things whatsoever you ask, believing 
you will stepping out in faith You will receive right Yeah, that works with little things. <clears throat> I Think the guy was sitting in this chair I think it was about three years ago and This guy was sitting in here and he he wanted prayer and his back was hurting him Okay so I says to somebody was helping me. And I can't remember who it was. I says, uh, well, listen, uh, Sarah, scoot your fanny back in the chair as far as you can. And, out. and then I had whoever was helping me picked up their legs like this. And this leg lengthening thing is usually scam artists do that. They, they, make, they make that look real. It's easy to fake. And um, so I go, well. I'm not going to get involved in fakery. Homie, don't play that. I says, well, hold out the leg. And then I learned this trick that if you put your thumbs on the knuckle, on your ankle, the ankle knuckle, and then you put the legs back together, you can see whether the thing is actually short or not. Because you're... Thumb is in the exact spot on both legs. Okay, so th whoever was helping me, it was like that. It was like three quarter of an inch short. This guy had a bad bad back. I said, okay, now watch this. So I go around behind the guy. I wasn't going to touch a thing. Heel, and it just boop. He got up, started walking around, no pain. It grew right out. I didn't touch nothing. I touched his shoulders. What was I doing there? That's a that's a minuscule thing, but I'm illustrating what I'm trying to illustrate what I'm saying here is that I already knew the leg thing works all the time. So I wasn't doubting. See, if the guy had asked me to Pray so he could grow another foot. I would have had to call Kelly. Uh, I I have doubts on growing feet. Okay, I'm going to admit that to you. Yeah, you, you can criticize me. I don't mind. I admit when I don't have it. I'll admit it to you. Growing feet are tough on me. I'm working on that faith. I'm working on it. But on the leg thing, I'm fine. I, that's a that's a dip. that's instantly. I, the hip thing, I learned that that they get healed all the time. I'm not down. And then I said something. When I'm, the reason I'm uh, I sound like I'm nuts right now, but I'm actually trying to illustrate this scripture here of if you if you believe something and you don't doubt at all, it's yours. If if it's a foot grow. I'm not the guy to do that because I don't I'm not there yet I'm struggling with new feet Yeah, I'm doubting and so if I you don't want me praying for a new foot because I'm, I'm in my back of my mind I'm going boy. I hope this works. We'll see it right there as soon as I said I hope this works I just wiped myself out Because I'm doubting I was having doubts about growing feet Well, I don't like brother Mike anymore. Well, you know, that's I don't have a problem with that a lot A lot of people don't like me and that's their problem But he says here if you mix in with your faith unbelief what happens it wipes out your faith dead in the water So now you know why <clears throat> Oral Roberts a. a Allen Smith Wigglesworth sister Edder Catherine Cole, now you know why all these people saw all these amazing miracles Because when they prayed they were not doubting And pistuo they would step out on their faith, which is what I did with the guy I went behind him I said now watch this oh and They come right out Am I in there counting? No, I was just sharing a simple thing. It was a simple prayer, a little deal I was using to illustrate these verses. 
I'm not saying I'm or Roberts and AAL. No, I'm just illustrating one simple thing. But this is what Jesus was telling you. You might have a fig tree. You might have a mountain. It doesn't matter to the Holy Ghost. He's a game changer. What matters is you stopping him with unbelief and doubt. Whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it. It's yours. Now you know why faith healers are so good at that. Why these people have giftings for that. Because they're not doubting. They know it's in the bag. And so they step out on their faith. Right? <clears throat> Mr. Wigglesworth, my, my uh, mother's got stomach cancer. She does. Praise God. They scream. He just picked her up, healed. Why? That he was pistuo. <laughs> See? No doubts, no unbelief. Step out on your faith. And that was his method of doing it. See? I do not do that when I pray for people. I, I have developed an anointed slapping method that I <laughs> stop doubting. Don't stop with your unbelief. Stop it. See, I got that down. That works. But the other thing I do, I don't have, I don't do that. I just can't come up with it. I'm doubting. Oh my gosh, am I going to get in a lawsuit? <laughs> so I don't do that, see, and so I don't get those miracles. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to put this every which way but loose, as simple as I can. When you mix unbelief and doubt in with your prayer, it wipes out your prayer. It stops God. God omniscient, omnipotent. He stopped. Your prayers aren't getting answered. Your kids are on drugs. Your daughter's pregnant again. You're broke because you doubted. How do you fix that? Repent. <laughs> Repent of it. You will say to this mountain, see, say, saying not word of faith crap, blabbing, that's just, no, you have to have it here first, and you speak out what you already know. See that? It's not word of faith. It's stepping out on God's word because you already have it here. You know it. I knew that guy's leg was going to get healed. So I went around and heal. See? Wigglesworth knew that that stomach cancer demon was coming right out of there. He knew it. There wasn't any doubts. They asked him, why'd you punch that lady in the gut? He said, I didn't. I punched the devil in the face. He just let him have it. God love him. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Did you hear that? Yeah. You pumped that portion of the verse up, you sell some books and tapes. No, and it doesn't work. It's not going to work because no doubts. No unbelief. Speak it out. Speaking it out is confirming what you already believe. Speaking it out without this is word of faith babble. It doesn't work. Nothing is impossible if you only believe. Oh, wait a minute. Did you say believe pistuo? Yes. Ah, now it makes sense. Pistuo, to step out on your faith. Nothing shall be impossible to those who believe they do something. See it? Not blab it without believing it. See that? That's only you trying to convince yourself of it. 
See, it's like Natalie Wood in uh, the miracle on 24th Street or was it 34th Street? What was the name of that movie? What was the name of that movie? 34th Street? Remember Natalie Wood in that movie? She was like four or five. Nobody saw that movie. Well, anyway, it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> And since you're all heathen, I'll have to go into more detail. But anyway, uh, they, they had this guy who was mentally ill, and, and he was pretending to be Santa Claus, and it was a harmless mental illness. And Natalie Wood didn't believe in him, see? And so she tried the word of faith route. She sat in her bedroom, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. She was trying to talk herself into believing, which doesn't work. Does it work? You know, God has dealt to every man, every woman, the measure of faith. You already have the faith. The problem isn't your faith, it's your doubt. Excellent. Mark 11. Now Jesus adds another twist to it. Here he goes. Have faith in God. Exete, piston, you. It says, have the faith of God. Okay? That is not possible for us to do that. That's not possible. It's Holy Ghost given. For me to have the faith of God, I have to have the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I can't do it on my own. I mean, I don't, I don't even have any faith to believe my wife. Here's the routine. Hi, hon. You want to go out for breakfast? Yeah, I want to go out for breakfast. All right, where do you want to eat? Oh, I don't know. Why don't you decide? All right, well, let's go get the uh, meat eater monster special at Denny's. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, well, let's go over here and get that over there. Ah, uh, I don't know. Now you see I'm doubting. <laughs> see it? Can you, can you sense it? I'm doubting. Yeah. No Smith Wigglesworth here. I'm, I'm turning into a chicken. I'm right now saying to myself, I got to get cereal out of the cabinet. <laughs> you follow? You're not married, sir. You know what I'm talking about. You're not married either. Thank God for that. Don't tell me you are. Or I'm, that's going to be it for me. I'm going to go back on drugs. Now listen. <clears throat> To have the faith of God is different than me having faith in my wife picking some place to eat. That's not going to happen. I already know that in here, so I don't have any faith. I don't know. I think I'll, I think I'll stay home this morning and eat my usual breakfast. My wife's a very strange person. She eats the exact same Breakfast every morning. <laughs> you talk about strange. It's the same thing. There's the toast. There's the eggs. I mean, toast and eggs. I mean, I could do that once in a while. I mean, I don't. I'm not prejudiced against toast or eggs. I'm not a bigot. Every day? Are you serious? Something. Something wrong. To have the faith of God, you've got to be built up on God's holy word. You have to exercise your faith to get it to grow.
See? So theoretically, I should be going from legs and backs to feet. See? And you only do that by exercising your faith and developing it. See? Everybody is the same. Nobody just wakes up, boom! God faith. Nobody does that. It's a process of growth. You have to grow spiritually to develop your anointing and your faith. In order to do that, you have to do something. You can't just sit and study all the time and read. You got to get out there and do it. See? You got to go out and find a bunch of people with no feet and start praying for feet. I haven't done that, so I have not developed my foot anointing. You see that? But I, but I could. Every Christian can develop their anointing in any area they choose. Nothing shall be impossible unto you if you only believe. Believe stepping out on your faith. See, when you step out on your faith, it presupposes you already believe in here. You already know it in here. So you're acting on it. Is this making sense? Oh, I sure hope it does. He says, listen, you can remove it, anything, miracles, but if you just diacrino, waffle, it's not going to happen. You're already halfway there. Why is that? You already have the faith. You have faith in your spirit, man. Don't you? <clears throat> it took some faith to come here and listen to me, that's for sure. But if you waffle or vacillate between two options, like I would on a foot, oh man, can that really grow? I mean, what are people going to think about it if he limps out of here? I mean, I've had these weird thoughts. That's wiping out my faith. You notice that? I'm having dumb thoughts come in my head. What if it doesn't happen? What are people going to think of me? I hope we can delete this out of YouTube. Right there, you know nothing's going to happen. Right? Because I'm off my game, so to speak. Correct? <clears throat> I'm waffling. Is God going to do that? Well, I don't know. What Oops, if you throw a butt in there, your prayer is gone like that. But, boom, dead. Well, I, dead. I hope, dead. I hope, hope will wipe your prayers out just like that. Hope is future tense. I hope it helped. Dead didn't help. But shall believe, Pistuo, step out in your faith, and then you speak it out, bang, it's yours. That should have been the word of faith teaching. They commercialize it so they could sell stuff. Oh, all I got to do is blab it out. No. Doesn't work like that. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things so you desire, same Greek word, why they use two different words? One was asked, the other was a desire. What have you? I've already been told I can have it. I'm just coming to get it. It's mine. I tell. When you pray, believe. Step out on your faith when you pray. Notice that? It says to step out before you got the answer because you know you're going to get it. So it's easy to step out on your faith. You see what he's saying? You're asking for something that you already were told yours. So you already have the faith to just come get it. I already, you already told me I could have it. And so I'm going to step out and do something like I have it before I get it. Bingo. You shall have it. it says it right there. It's yours. What do I got to do? Increase my faith? No. You have to remove 
doubt. Repent of doubt. Get the doubt out. Yeah, that was good. Once you vacillate when you pray, The great apostle George Mueller, I told you this before, he had a meeting to go to and he was on a ship. And a massive fog came in. Has anybody ever read the autobiography of George Mueller? This guy was a monster of faith. Well, the captain tells him, listen, we may not make it to such and such. He says, well, listen, I've never been late for an appointment for God. I've never been late before. He says, that can't happen. Well, he says, I can't control the weather, and we can't go with this fog. You couldn't even see, like, your hand, practically. He says, well, let's pray. So they start praying. Lord Jesus, and right in the middle of the prayer, Mueller goes, stop praying. Says, Sir, you don't need to pray anymore. You don't believe. Five minutes later, poof, fog gone. What's the story I'm trying to tell you? It's these verses. Mueller was not vacillating back and forth between whether the fog was going to lessen a little bit or was it going to disappear. Maybe it would disappear in and out. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. I want it gone now. Period. What happened to the fog? Boom. Whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. Mueller stepped out on his faith. He went to the captain. He says, no, I've never been late. Let's just pray. The fog will leave. He's stepping out on his faith. The captain had no faith, so he told him, don't bother to pray. I don't need your prayers. You don't need anybody praying for you who doesn't believe. Cancel them. Dear Lord, please give me more faith. Stop praying that prayer. Change it. Oh, dear Jesus, please help me repent of doubting. Please help me repent of vacillating. I believe, then I don't. I believe, then I hedge my bet. Is this helping anybody? <laughs> well, you're staring at me like uh, I fell off a tuna truck in Yuma. Um, I hope I'm helping somebody. You want to wipe out God and stop him in his tracks? Oh boy, here's how you do it. And you can put him down quickly. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. What is he saying there? You're in, the crap in here blocks your prayers. Blocks them. Yeah. You pray, they bounce off the ceiling. People have actually said that to me in counseling. Said, Brother Mike, sometimes when I pray, it feels like they're bouncing off the ceiling. I, it doesn't seem like God hears me. He said, Well, He's not hearing you. I find out later in the counseling session, and here's why. One, two, I write them down. One, two, three, four, five. Reverse that verse, and what do you get? You remove the iniquity in your heart, your prayers are heard. Correct? That's what it's saying. Draw near to God, he'll draw nigh to you. The Apostle James in verse chapter 4 wrote this uh, section of text to born-again Christians, not sinners. Why in the heck would he say this to born-again Christians? Draw nigh to God. Because some Christians had taken this for granted. They got used to it. They didn't have any childlike faith anymore. They were just pew suckers. They sit in the pew and they absorb a bunch of information. Everybody's preaching and teaching. Then they head over to Denny's to get the meat special that I missed out on because of my wife. They take it for granted. They get used to it. Oh, we're singing. Oh, we're donating. Oh, we're hearing announcements. Oh, that's, that's a good verse. Oh, that was funny. I hope the minister's got something good for me today. I need to be fed. 
I need somebody to feed me. Why? Because you're a spiritual loser. That's why. You're always relying on somebody else. You're running around from church to church. Can you give me a word? I need somebody to give me a word. Yeah, I'll give you a word. You're a spiritual loser. That's a word for you. In fact, I threw in a bonus. That was two words. You don't need to run around. I need somebody to give me a word from God. Hey, I'm giving you. I should be signing autographs if that's what you're looking for. I'm giving you word from God right here. I'm handing it to you. Draw nigh to God, Christians, and He will draw nigh to you. Bingo. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Now that's a Greek adjective there. Harmatelos means someone who's practicing living in sin. Well, who is that? You wouldn't believe how many people have come to me for counseling over the years. Who have been doing exactly that and they're spirit filled born again Christians? It happens all the time. Have you ever heard of the term a church scandal? Scandals happen in churches all the time. They're born again Christians, they're, they're spirit filled Christians. So James is talking to them right here. Cleanse your hands, you. Sinners you people who practice sinning and Purify your hearts you dipsicus a person with two souls a Person with two souls is somebody is like has a split personality Ooh. You see him at church hallelujah praise God blah blah See him at the track. Oh my horse look They got a split personality you ever met anybody like that at church? Well, they're all over the place. Beloved, of our hearts do not condemn us. We have confidence toward God. What's kataginosko? It's somebody who uh, has low self-esteem and they're always nitpicking themselves. This is wrong, that's wrong. I don't like my body. I don't like my clothes. I don't like my social status. I grew up poor. I'm the wrong race. I'm the wrong sex. I'm people who nitpick themselves. Nitpickers. Does it help you to know that God has never done that to you? He's never sat around nitpicking you. He doesn't do that. He likes you. He wants to help. Whatever we ask, we receive it. There it is again. I tell I've already been promised it, so I'm just simply coming to get it. It's mine. Why? Because I keep his commandments. <laughs> Whoa. That's a bold statement. Toreo means to guard something with your life, you know. If you put all your eggs in one basket, you gotta watch that basket. That's guarding it. Okay. There's a this guy's loaded with demons. That's Floyd Mayweather. You ever heard of him? He's the richest fighter in history. He always Toreo. Who are these guys? <laughs> Those are his guards. Okay. The Bible says, "Hey, you got to guard." The word of God. You got to guard your heart. You got to guard your faith, because if doubt creeps in, it's over. So what's he saying here? Whatever we ask, we receive because we guard his commandments, not ignore them, but guard them. And it says, we poieo, that's a present active tense verb, practice repetitively doing what? Aristus. Things God agrees with. Okay? Yelling at somebody, taking offenses, 
criticizing them, nitpicking yourself are things God does not agree with. So therefore, your prayers go unanswered. You've got to practice, repetitively practice living for God, correct? And doing the things that He finds agreeable. That's just common sense. True? John 15, Jesus said, You are my friends if you do. What I told you, right? Well, Brother Mike, I'm a friend of God. I was singing it at Hillsong. I am a friend of God. I am a friend. No, you're not. That's just a song. It means nothing. Unless you are doing what he told you to do. Those are the only friends God has. Well, that doesn't make any sense, Mike. I'm a born-again Christian. That's right. You can be a born-again Christian and not be a friend of God. Nobody heard me. <clears throat> you can be somebody's relative, but not be their friend. You can be married to somebody and not be their friend. Correct? You, you can have a brother or sister whose blood related to you, but not be their friend. Correct? Because of whatever reason, many different reasons. Well, it works with God the same way. You can be a child of God, and but not be a friend of God. Why? Because you're not doing what He told you to do. This is how you stop the power of God in your life. Anybody here married? <clears throat> Well, God set up a system that's organized. Here it is. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. They're all of equal value, but there's a structure to it. Dad, Mom, Kids. Structure. Trinity, Family. The mother is not better than the father. The father is not better than the mother. The kids, Jesus is not better than the father. The Holy Spirit. There's a structure to it. God set it up that way. That's how the system's set up. Boop, boop. At the top is who? Well, it says it right here: the husband or the dad. Okay, and he's telling you that tomeo is a Greek word. It means to place value upon your wife. If he says, you, if you don't do that, what happens to you? Your prayers are, a copto, chopped down. Hmm? Yeah, I had a couple, couple come in and see me for counseling, and uh, the husband had a hair trigger temper. Boom, like that. Flash temper. Pew. And when he when this thing would flash out, bang, he would start degrading her and ripping her, criticizing her, the whole deal. Everybody's seen families like that. This guy couldn't get healed. He'd been prayed for by every Christian, every prayer chain, every evangelist that ever came to his church, and he was sicker than a dog. Anybody anybody following me? Well, guess what was happened to his prayers to be healed? What happened to them? A copto is the Greek word that you would use to cut down a tree, you know, chop it down. Dear Lord, please heal me. Chop. Heal my body. Chop. This is all spiritual. 
people, people don't understand this. It's spiritual. He never did get healed. Because he wouldn't stop blasting her. That's how it works. What happens if the husband repents? <laughs> Victory. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. World famous verse. Seeing we are compassed about, means surrounded, by such a great cloud of witnesses. Who's he talking about? Uh, all the saints in chapter 11, the hall of fame, right? The chapter of faith, Hebrews 11. He said, well, since we're surrounded by all these great men and women of faith, he said, let us lay aside every ankus, every burden, and these are burdens. In my counseling practice, I've seen it a thousand times. Sadness, grief, sorrow, misery. Self-hatred, doubt, depression. Every burden, lay it aside. And the sin which so easily eucharistatos means blocks us. Okay, You would use that Greek word for the woman that had the issue of blood. She came to see Jesus but couldn't get to him because she was being blocked by the crowd. Right? The sin is blocking us from getting our prayers answered. So let us run with patience, endurance, the race that is set before us. Question for you. What do you think of this Bible study? Did anybody get any value out of it? Would anybody be interested in changing and fixing it. <laughs> yeah. You have the power to block God Almighty. What are you blocking? All these benefits He wants to give you, all these blessings, the deliverance of the healing, the finances, the Whatever it is, everything is covered under the blessings of God, is it not? Do you have them? No? Then something's blocking it. What I was trying to do tonight was trying to help you see what might be one of the things blocking it. Is it taking an offense against somebody? <clears throat> is it carrying around burdens for your Spouse, your parents, your children, worrying about them, working to save them. You ever met a parent like that, codependent? They're always working to try to save their kids. Every time they turn around, they get sicker. Why? I just, just taught you exactly why. Your prayers are not being answered for your children. I just showed you. <clears throat> You cannot pray for your children and then be afraid of their future. That wipes out your prayer. You cannot pray for your kids and see them healed. They're not going to get healed if you're still worrying about them. Because fear creates unbelief. That's why the devil uses it on every born-again Christian who's ever lived. His club, his whip on Christians is fear. Usually fear of the future usually Fear of poor health usually fear of finances usually fear of loved ones being hurt or 
dying unsaved. Usually some kind of personal fear is what it is. Once you latch on to it and keep it, it eventually comes true. You don't believe me? I think you do. Job said, the thing I feared the most came upon me. You know what Job was? A codependent parent. All he thought about was his kids. He worried about them all the time. Oh, he's worried about his kids. He made sacrifices to God, Jehovah every day for his kids. Just in case they weren't doing what was right. So just in case they were making a mistake. Job covered for him. He made sacrifices for his family, for their health. Oh, man. He was afraid of health, sickness. He was afraid of his kids. Something happened to him. Guess what happened? The thing I feared the most came upon me. When you worry about your kids, the devil moves in on them and it has legal rights to attack them because your prayers were blocked because you doubted. Well, I wasn't doubting, I was praying. If you add fear or doubt or unbelief to your prayer, it wipes out your prayer. It blocks your faith. Once you remove it, nothing shall be impossible unto you. All things whatsoever you pray, believing, you shall receive. If you say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall remove. All things whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. It's spiritual. All I was doing was sharing how this spiritually works. That's all. I was trying to help you. Because you want your prayers answered. What's the purpose of praying if you don't want to want the prayer answered? What is it, some psychiatric thing on you? I, 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 you feel better when you pray? And those prayers are worthless. Most people want prayers answered. They do. They want their prayers answered. And what I was trying to do tonight was show you what could be blocking your prayer. Something's blocking you. Pray. All right, let's let's go ahead and pray then.